Okay, now that you've watched the mini lecture on how to estimate bad debt expense using the two methods, let's get some practice with those methods. Let's take a look at 8-7. Assume Simple Company had credit sales of 200000 and cost of goods sold of 150000 for the period. Simple uses the percent of credit sales method and estimates that 1% of credit sales would result in uncollectible accounts. Before the end of period adjustment is made, the allowance for doubtful accounts has a credit balance of 250. What amount of bad debt expense would the company record as an end of period adjustment? Okay, the way we calculate that is we multiply these credit sales, $250,000, times the percent we think we won't collect, 1%, or 0 0.01, and that gives us $2,500. We don't care what the balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts is before adjustment. That doesn't factor into this method. You simply multiply the credit sales times the historical percent of uncollectability, and we make our journal entry. And this is the journal entry from page one of our notes, a debit to bad debt expense, and a credit to the allowance for doubtful accounts. And remember that this allowance account is a contra account, contra asset account specifically. And on the balance sheet, we will use this account to subtract from accounts receivable what we think we won't collect. Now this is an estimate. We're not sure of that amount, so instead of crediting the accounts receivable account directly, we use this account to subtract for us. When a specific customer's debt goes bad, we decide to give up on collecting it because we're just not able to. We take it out of this account by debiting and we credit the accounts receivable account. That's the write-off. Okay, so we got a little practice with the credit percent of credit sales method. Now let's take a look at the aging approach. This is the second way that we can estimate bad debt expense. Brown Cow Dairy uses the aging approach to estimate bad debt expense. The balance of each account's receivable is aged on the basis of three time periods. So, in the 1 to 30 days old category, $12,000 is owed to Brown Cow Dairy. In the 31 to 90 day category, 5000 is owned to Brown Cow Dairy. And then finally, in the more than 90 days old category, I'll just use the greater than sign, 3000 is owed to Brown Cow Dairy. In other words, the total that is owed is 12000 plus 5000 plus 3000 or a total of $20,000 is owed in total to Brown Cow Dairy. That should be the balance in your accounts receivable account. Back to the problem. Experience has shown that for each age group, the average loss rate on the amount of the receivable due to uncollectability is 5% for Category 1, and I'm going to put 0 0.05, but in Connect, I believe they just want you to put the number 5 because the percent is there already. For Category 2, it's 10%, and for Category 3, it's 20%. So now we multiply the total owed to us in that category times the percent we won't collect to get the dollars we won't collect. So $12,000 times 5% is $600. 5000 owed to us times 10% we think we won't collect gives us $500 we think we won't collect. And then 3000 owed to us times 20% we think we won't collect gives us $600 we think we won't collect. Now let's add them up. 
to get the total amount we think we won't collect. $600 plus $500 plus $600 and the total is $1,700. So of $20,000 owed to us, we think we will not collect $1,700. That's not going to be the amount of bad debt expense though. That amount is the desired balance in the allowance account. So how do we figure out the amount that we need to use for our adjusting entry? Well, we, have, we need to make a T account. At December 31st, end of the current year, the allowance for doubtful accounts has an $800 credit balance before the end of period adjusting entry is made. So let's make a T account here for the allowance account. And let's put that $800 credit balance in there. Okay, so right now there's $800 already in that account and we want that balance to be $1,700. I apologize, you can't see that. There we go. We want that balance to be $1,700. Currently it's $800. How much more do we have to add in to make that balance 1,700? Well, you can subtract and the answer is 900. That's the amount of the adjusting journal entry. So the entry would be the same account names as in the prior uh, problem, a debit to bad debt expense for 900 and a credit to the allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm going to abbreviate that because we won't fit it all. And that's how much we'd put into that allowance account. After we post that, then the balance certainly is 1700 Okay, now here's a little bit of a twist on it. It says if the unadjusted balance in the allowance account was a 600 debit balance, then what amount of bad debt expense should be recorded on December 31st? Okay, so let's make another T account for the allowance account. And let's put 600 in the debit position. Now normally allowance contra accounts, like the allowance for doubtful accounts, has the opposite balance of the account that it modifies. So the account that goes along with the allowance for doubtful accounts is accounts receivable. And accounts receivable is an asset which has a normal debit balance. So the contra account should have a normal credit balance like it did in step two. However, this one has a debit balance. Why would that be? Well, let's take a look at our notes for a moment. We debit the allowance account when we do write-offs when we take a particular customer's account off of our books because we'd, we've identified it as uncollectible. We've tried and tried and we cannot collect it, so we're basically giving up. They still owe us the money, but we've decided that we're not going to try anymore. So we debit the allowance account and credit accounts receivable to remove their account off of our books. So that's when we debit that allowance account. So if that allowance account is now in a debit position, that means we've written off so many bad debts that the allowance account now has a debit balance. We must not have put in enough into that account in a prior period. We did not make a large enough provision in the allowance account to cover all the debts that went bad. So in this case, if the account before adjustment has a $600 debit balance and we want it to have that $1,700 credit balance, how much would we need to add in there? Think of this like a number line. You're going from a negative 600 to a positive 1,700. So you would have to add in 2,300. So we would debit bad debt expense 
for 2,300 and we would credit the allowance, and I'm going to abbreviate this DA, for doubtful accounts for 2,300. Now watch when we post this. If you had to calculate the balance of that, we have credits of 2,300, debits of 600, the difference is 1,700, and it's on the larger side, which is the credit side. And we're done with that demonstration.